Okay, hello. Um, I'm trying a new thing here. I'm going to um, take you through the 7.63.0 release of curl. I just put out the release here. I just pushed it out, uploaded the packages, and the tag, the git repo. Oh, I forgot to fix the tags on GitHub, but I'll do it in a minute. I'll first just explain something about the release in, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Uh, at um, here, uh, where is it? Uh, I'm trying to sort of figure out this video thing. On this, I'm I've uh, pasted in a little uh, view of my browser over here. It's my blog post about the 7.63.0 release that I'm going to uh, hit publish in a few seconds. And I am just wanted to, in case you wanted to hear me uh, talk about it, do that. So this is 7.63.0, the release number 178 since the beginning. Uh, yeah, a lot of releases. So this is, I would say, maybe one of those releases that aren't that very spectacular. We're doing our releases pretty regularly, as you might know. We, we usually just do releases every eight weeks, so half that period we except features or changes and half the period we only fix bugs so we have typically we do four weeks features uh, or accept features and then four weeks just no features and just fix bugs uh, uh, except for this cycle we shortened the this, this cycle a bit and we only had six weeks so we had three weeks features three weeks bugs due to me being away so that the next release date really collided with my traveling and just moving it back one week would then make it a release in the Christmas weekend or just before Christmas. So we wanted to avoid that, mostly since we've been doing um, security advisories pretty much for every release recently. So we s thought that maybe it would be a bit, I mean, people wouldn't be that happy to have to fix security problems just before Christmas. So we put it this week and uh, just then the irony that we don't have any security advisories for this release, which of, of course is uh, really good and so on, but still. Uh, fun things, yep. So 42 days since the previous release, we did manage to squeeze in f 78 bugs, I think it's 79, it doesn't matter. Um, many, many contributors, 50 people are credited for have having helped out, uh, contributed code, text, bug reports, suggestions, whatever, improvements. And we, uh, it was made by 31 commit authors and 14 of those are new. So a lot of new faces and new names in, in the, the records. That's awesome. So now we got ourselves one new set up option. So now we have 209, no, 262 different options, set opt options, but that's different um, settings for a specific transfer you ask libcurl to do. And in this case, we got a new option called curl u, set opt underscore curl u, which is just uh, a way to pass in the URL to libcurl, the, the URL to uh, transfer in a different way. Basically, we introduced the URL I API in the last version, 7.62. And now, so w when you parse a URL using that URL I API, you create a URI, URL handle that sort of holds the URL that you're parsing or constructing. And that handle is called curl u. And now you can pass that handle to curl instead of passing a string with the URL that you want curl to transfer. So if you're doing an application that is already perhaps parsing URLs or handling URLs, creating URLs using the curl URL API, you, you no longer have to uh, serialize that or uh, into a string and then pass that string to curl and curl will then just parse that again. So now you can instead just pass the handle for an already parsed URL. So curl won't have to do it again. Uh, just a convenience thing. Another, we actually did two other changes this time, also two very subtle ones. The command line option dash dash write out, also called dash w in the short version, which is the command uh, command line version for outputting more info after a transfer. 
if you haven't used it you should check it out because it's pretty cool actually and we added an, a way to ask curl to send that info to standard error instead of standard out which otherwise is the default and has always just been the case turns out sometimes people want the output of standard out and this to standard error or, or turning it around in, in various ways and now you can we also added uh, uh, undocumented command line for the Windows version to show debug information or information for debugging purposes uh, you can read about it in, in on github and as I mentioned we did 78 or 79 bug fixes for in during these 42 days and I wanted to highlight some of them or just take you through them because it's uh, fun well of course it's fun so um, I think the primary thing we did in 7.62.0 as I already mentioned was the URL API so nowadays we offer an API for applications to parse and create URLs and it'll then use the same parser as your uh, as curl otherwise uses internally which is a, a great way for applications to make sure that they understand URLs the very same way that curl does so that there's no discrepancies and no way for uh, I know bad stuff to happen in sort of um, smuggling things or making um, uh, there uh, there is at least a potential security problem if if your application and curl think differently about what uh, what's the URL and what's to d what to do with a specific URL? Um, but okay, let, um, that's hold that. So the URL API was one of the big things in 7.62.0, and it caused um, some issues after that. Since I, uh, of course, introduced a lot of regressions when I changed everything internally to use that. API internally as well as to provide that in externally. One fun thing recently is that we've, if we've optimized or we made cur curl more efficient in how it handles cookies, and one thing it does nowadays is, I don't remember exactly when we did this, just a few uh, within a few versions, a few years, at least, so that it, it expires cookies earlier now, so that it, it doesn't keep old cookies around as much anymore which of course is good if you're handling a lot of cookies then you're, there's sort of no point in keeping old cookies around and this in combination with the fact that libcurl traditionally has never so when you ask curl to write cookies to a file at the end of the cookie jar to a file at the end of a session it would never previously output a file if there wa was no cookie around internally which so this turned <laughs> out to be an interesting bug this time this time around then because one user then read cookies from a file used the cookies um, which then up were updated and expired during the session so that there were no cookies around and then the user wanted the cookie file to be written again but there were no file no cookies left so it wouldn't save any file and in this case the application would restart and read the cookies again from the old file because the old file was still around <laughs> which uh, turned out to be f i mean it caused a change in behavior and also it was a bit unexpected so now when when there there has been cookies and there are no cookies around anymore it will still save a, a cookie file although just no cookies in there in an effort to restore some of the old behavior and fix that problem at least another interesting thing that you would imagine that we would have fixed a long time ago since cookies is not really a new thing is that when you set basically cookies is a strange um, protocol format thing so when the traditional way of setting uh, telling the client when a specific cookie expires 
you would set it to a full uh, date string timestamp, you know, all these Unix thing called December 18, 1918 at this time of day, blah blah blah. But uh, after a while, in um, I don't remember the dates here, but someone at one point thought that was a weird format to do it, so they added uh, a property called max age so that you could instead tell the client so this cookie is supposed to live this many seconds in the client. Max age equals number of seconds. Fine. And over time then we we have had to support both of those. So you can set either a date or an expire uh, number of seconds with the max age field. Okay, so we have supported that in curl for a long time, of course, and um, now it turned out that we did it wrong. So when you set max age, you, you tell curl how long this cookie is supposed to live. F I mean, from now, this many seconds. But if you're setting max age to zero, that's supposed to expire it immediately, not be counted as now plus zeros, uh, as sort of not the lifetime now plus zero seconds, which since that's what we did then, so it would ac actually live this very second that you receive the cookie. So if you would receive it and use it again within the same second, it would be used while it should have been expired. We fixed the bug. It was quite apparent once I just so, uh, re refreshed myself in the uh, RFC and how it's supposed to do. Another fun thing is that I, at some point a while ago, I messed up the timeout handling for an idle connection when doing a curl easy perform. If so, if you would do a curl easy perform on a trans uh, with a transfer, you would have a timeout that was an, perhaps you know, I, I've mentioned in this little text here an example of 5.1 seconds timeout, and at 5.1 seconds the connection is idle, nothing happens. Um, curl wouldn't notice until f a fully aligned six seconds, so it would only check every 1,000 milliseconds due to a little problem in my logic. Um, I don't think this has hurt that many users, since it, it really needs an idle connection when the timeout triggers for this to actually get noticed. Of course it happens sometimes, and, and the problem is only within one second, so not that bad, annoying and silly, but yeah. We fixed a bunch of things with NSS, and NSS especially then related to TLS 1.3. It turns out that some distributions ship a newer NSS with TLS 1.3 disabled. So when you build curl with that library, curl assumes that 1.3 is around, but when you run it then at runtime, it fails because um, the library doesn't understand 1.3 or doesn't know about it, it's disabled. So we added logic then to work that out properly at runtime. So if in case you allow something lower and then one or three isn't supported, it'll just um, lower the maximum and it'll continue. And we also fix another build problem with really old uh, NSS versions that we still actually try to support. So if you're on a really, really old legacy Fedora or something, yay. We fixed the uh, TLS 1.3 res session resumption with OpenSSL with someone, uh, I don't remember his name right now, but it was a great uh, report, read this curl source code and realized that we're not treating the SNPrintf return code correctly, <laughs> which wasn't really true, but the remark was good because it then uh, made highlighted a problem that we have an internal SNPrintf implementation and it doesn't return the same return code values as the POSIX SNPrintf, which I guess is a mistake originally and it wasn't really intended. But the point is that we have SNPrintf implemented internally for portability reasons so that it'll always return the same thing, it'll always work the same 
way all across all platforms, which is act actually very convenient for all the code internally. And we have flags that works with the you know size t variables and stuff like that, which otherwise is not universally available with smprinf, uh, especially across different platforms and, uh, and newer and older and legacy uh, old crap and, and modern things. So anyway, our smprinf doesn't use the same return codes and doesn't work exactly as the POSIX version, which then made us rename our smprinf implementation so that we won't trick users into believing that we are actually the standard smprinf. Now it's called m smprinf to make sure that users just don't think it's the regular one. And we're also sort of banning um, the regular smprinf name from the source code so that people won't accidentally slip in um, usage of that one. <coughs> okay, um, going through, I mentioned it back to the URL API then. So I, when uh, we introduced this URL API, I I did it. So yeah, I caused a lot of regressions because I failed to do proper testing. I, well, I added a bunch of test cases for this, of course, and uh, all existing test cases ran through and everything. I thought it was pretty good, but it turned out, of course, that I had uh, uh, just a bad imagination and there was a lot of missing test cases. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps the funniest one, or at least according to me, was that if you would use a very short host name and a um, port number like hello colon 80 the parser would actually try to no it, it would actually consider the hello colon as a scheme a url scheme so it would say no i don't know about any url scheme hello uh, while we would support that sort of schemeless url format otherwise we also i also broke the ipv6 address parser in um, in more ways than one. I think we have them fixed now. And also when I changed the internal handling of URLs to use the API internally as well, I, bro I accidentally broke HTTP digest authentication um, for reasons. Well, I didn't use all the parts from the URL in the re uh, request headers properly. Hopefully fixed. I also broke LDAP, uh, LDAP S and uh, some um, details about how we extract information from the URL when doing LDAP. Unfortunate. Hopefully most of the URL uh, regressions fixed now. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we have a few of them left. <coughs> Since we now, I think four or five of them are fixed now, but we only had 40 days, so um, I'm, mm. Um, report it. report any discrepancies if you see them. So I enabled the DNS over HTTPS for HTTP 1 as well, bec pretty much uh, because I could. It was really easy. I don't really n remember exactly why I limited it. The, the specification recommends using it only over HTTP 2 or higher, but uh, there's really no reason for me or for curl to enforce that in, a, in any hard way. So it'll try to use HTTP 2 now, but it'll accept HTTP 1 as well, which I think also is handy for people who want to uh, play around with it, debug it, uh, use it as a tool to see what uh, DNS or better HTTPS says about things. It's pretty handy and it seems to work. In general, um, I suspect that not that many people have used Doe with curl yet because I don't get a lot of feedback about it. One of these long-standing issues in URL land isn't really strictly related to the URL parsing but more what is a URL and how to handle with a URL is what do you do with a URL, including a host name that ends with a trailing dot, the period? And we've been we've, we've been struggling with this before, and now we're back on it, and now we're 
we changed how we handle it. Previously, before 7.63, we just cut off any trailing dots from the name and we used that name with this stripped dot everywhere. And everywhere then I mean resolving the host name, using it in the host header in HTTP, using it in, in the SNI field with TLS and using the host name for cookies that's that, uh, and so on. But it turns out it was a bit limited since several name resolve lookup APIs such as get adder info actually uses that dot as a signal that it shouldn't append its own local you know domains when searching for the name. So we would by stripping out the dot unconditionally we would uh, limit functionality a little bit too much. So now if you use uh, Starting now, then, if you use a trailing dot in the host name, it'll use that name with the trailing dot for the name resolve only, and then cut off the dot and use it dotless in all the other fields. Because all the other fields, they don't like the trailing dot anyway. So if we would keep the dot for those, we would just break everywhere. The host head header never wants the dot, and the SNI field basically never wants the dot either. I think actually the RFC says for, for SNI it says we shouldn't use it. For host header it says we should use exactly the same as in the URL, which is a lie because if we would do that we also get breakage. Um, so yeah, mm, trailing dots, uh, I'm sure this will come back and bite us somehow, but uh, let's deal with it then. And finally, in 7.62.0, one uh, the previous release, 42 days ago, one of the primary things that I changed back then was that I made it enable HTTP2 by default. Uh, libcurl does, if you're using HTTPS, because I figured why not. But of course that uh, caused some fun side effects. And most notably then, which of course I knew about, but I was too stupid to remember and handle back then, was that NTLM authentication it doesn't work over HTTP2 and it requires, uh, it does authentication of connections, which then sort of uh, isn't really working with HTTP2 because HTTP2 uses minus streams, so it doesn't really authenticate the connection. So when you're doing HTLM for mo uh, a modern server will now just deny the HTTP2 request and say no no go back to 1.1 and do it again and and uh, we now have actually two fixes for that and one is that we actually now support that response code when the HTTP2 server says HTTP 1.1 required we we go back and we retry the request over 1.1 instead and if in um authentication uh, sort of back and forth, we pick NTLM. We make sure that we enforce the connection to use 1.1 even before the server um, says so, because we know that with NTLM we want 1.1 and not 2. Uh, yeah, those are the funniest bug fixes, I think. Well, perhaps those more, more notable, more interesting to talk about. There are more. Of course, you go to the release notes or the changelog on the website and you can read all about them and most of them are linked to their GitHub or mailing list discussions. You can read all about it. Starting now then, we're d we do the release now and we ship and in 56 days we do the next release. That's December 6, 2019. And of course, if you have features or changes, we have now four weeks of uh, feature window to merge them. We have pending features that are about to land that will bump the number to 7.64 for, for the next release. So if we don't do anything before then, per perhaps due to some drastic major problem bug, if we don't do that, we'll do the next release called 7.64 in February. See you then.